All right, if you want long, flowing, fuller looking hair, I got some good stuff for you today. Let's check it out. One of the biggest hair growth mistakes that I see people making is not using enough conditioner. Recently, I was training a new stylist, and welcome to the team, you know who you are, but every time during training we washed hair together, she would always go really, really light on the conditioner. So every time I was like, let's get a little bit more conditioner. Even more conditioner than that. And new stylists are usually a little bit nervous. They don't want to come across as wasting a ton of products, so I totally get it. But if even stylists aren't using enough conditioner, there's a really good chance that you aren't either, which means you're really holding your hair back. So why is this important? Because when you don't use enough conditioner, your hair will have this dryness to it. And dry hair really struggles when it comes to growing. So what most people do when they notice the dryness is they're like, okay, I'll just add some moisturizing products to my hair. But no, it does not work like that. The moisturizing products make your hair heavy, which means that your hair will feel gross and dirty on like day one or day two. And you'll be stuck washing your hair all the time. It's bad for your hair and it's bad for hair growth. Ideally, you want to let your hair live its best life by going at least three days between washes. And I hear you like, Chris, there's no way I can go three days. It's so gross. But you can. You just need to cut the heavy products out. The products that you probably don't even realize are heavy. And instead, just use a little bit more conditioner. That's the way to do it. A quick rule of thumb is to go by hair length. If you have short hair, you should run out of shampoo before you run out of conditioner. And if you have long hair, you should be running out of conditioner before you run out of shampoo. You want to remember that you're only putting conditioner on your mids and ends. And short hair doesn't have much mids and ends down here, so you don't need that much conditioner. But on the other hand, longer hair has more mids and ends, needs more conditioner. That's why you run out of conditioner before shampoo. And let's just for fun say that you used a little bit too much conditioner. That extra conditioner is going to get rinsed right out your hair isn't going to be heavy. So with the conditioner strategy, your hair is going to stay fresh, light, and bouncy. And you're going to be like, Chris, I can't believe it, but I can go three days between washes now and the dryness is completely gone. And every time I say something like this, people are going to look at me and say, oh, he's a hair person. He's just trying to make more money by selling more conditioner. And yeah, I am trying to get you to use an extra 25 cents of conditioner when you do your hair. But I'm also showing you how to cut out a bunch of other hydrating and shine products that you're using to get rid of the dryness. So you're actually saving money and getting better hair. Try this out. Strategy, not miracle products. The right strategy will beat those miracle products every day of the week, not even close. And trust me when I tell you the 21 year old dudes trying to get rich selling you stuff on Amazon have not scoured the world's great rainforest and returned with some undiscovered hair growth ingredient. It's not what's going on here. And you know what? That's actually totally fine because you don't need any magic for hair growth. It's actually not that hard. All you need is to have a strategy to unlock your hair's natural growth potential. It only seems hard because you've never had anybody show you how it works. So let's go over it. No one ever tells you the dirty little secret behind hair growth. Most people think that if you measure your hair, wait a month and measure your hair again, that will tell you how much your hair grew. But that's absolutely not true at all. And if you understand why it's not true, you'll be on your way to your hair goals. So let me show you how it works. The hair growth equation looks like this. How much did your hair grow minus how much your hair broke off on the ends. Everyone forgets the minus part here. Most people's ends aren't in great shape, so they're dry, splitting, breaking off, and costing you length. There's a really good reason for that, and it's because we don't notice our ends coming off, because it's not like a viral video where you have a curling iron and it whacks off like six inches. It's much more subtle than that. Your ends break off in these little tiny pieces that are almost like dust. The way that I prove this to clients when they sit in the chair and say, my hair isn't growing, my hair isn't growing, is I point to their roots where their color has grown out. If your color has grown out this far from your roots, I promise you, your hair grew this much. There's no way around that. And even when I point that out, it doesn't really hit them until I explain that yes, your hair may have grown out this much. The reason it's not that much longer is because as your hair was growing, the ends were breaking off, so it wasn't able to actually add any length, 
even though your hair was growing. But once they get that part, the question is, how do they keep their ends healthy and stop them from breaking off and turning to dust? The answer, like I said earlier, is you just need a plan. There's two aspects to this. Number one is the way that you style your ends. You need to style them in a way that keeps them healthy. And number two, you need to be choosing products that are good for your ends to keep them healthy. Let's start first with products for growth. All right, so we already know that growth does not matter at all if your ends are constantly breaking off and you lose all the length that you're getting with that growth. Luckily, there's a product for every hair problem and your ends are no different. For the problem of dead, splitting, dry ends, the product is hair oil. Hair oil is heavy duty hydration, but you don't wanna slather this all over your hair because it's gonna to be too much and too heavy for most of your hair. But hair oil is absolutely perfect for your ends because they get cut, meaning they have a hole at the bottom that moisture can escape from. And that dryness means that your ends are going to soak up this hair oil. They're gonna drink it right up in ways that the rest of your hair will not. And that is the reason you want most of the oil to be on your ends. If you get on your meds, if you get on your roots, it's okay, but it will not absorb the oil the way your ends do because they're not as dry. But there's a huge disclaimer here, just like with every other hair product, you need to choose the hair oil that fits your hair type. You can't just use any of them. If you wanna figure out which oil I would use on you if you came in to my salon, you can check out my recommended product list in the description. It even has a hair type quiz to help you figure out your hair type. All right, so now your ends are better and that will allow for a decent amount of hair growth, but at the end of the day, your ends can never be healthier than your mids. Remember that your mids turn into your ends and if you have unhealthy mids, you're always gonna have unhealthy ends that will not retain length for you because they're always breaking off. So the next step is to get you healthy mids. And this doesn't just help with hair growth, it makes your hair look nice and shiny and just better overall. Now, when we say healthy or damaged hair, we're referring to the state of the outside protective layer of your hair, which is called the cuticle. You've probably heard of it. When the cuticle is nice and healthy and smooth without any holes in it, the color of your hair can shine through really easily and it's nice and vibrant and shiny. It's awesome. But when your cuticle is damaged, the hair looks dull and it has this like white film on top. It's basically due to holes in the outside layer doesn't look nearly as good. But back to healthy mids, like we said earlier, every hair problem has a product to fix it. And the product for fixing mids is leave-in conditioner. You're already used to using regular conditioner, that's great, totally cool, but it's only half the equation. You must be using a leave-in conditioner. If you get anything out of this video, it's that you need to incorporate a leave-in conditioner into your routine. All the styling products out there that are telling you they to give you shine or health or this or that, if you just use this one product, you can replace all of them. This is what you're missing. It's the single most important hair product after shampoo and conditioner. So why don't you hear more influencers talking about leave-in conditioners? Because like I said earlier, this replaces a ton of other products and it makes no sense to pay influencers to sell one product instead of buying 10 products. Anyway, for this, you wanna use six to eight sprays for fine hair, eight to 10 sprays for medium hair, 10 to 12 for coarse hair, and make sure to only use it on wet hair and then brush it through afterwards, healthy mids, good to go. All right, so we've learned how to take care of our mids so that we can go on to have healthy ends, but there's still one thing at the root of this problem, and for those of you paying attention, that's right, it's your roots because they turn into your mids. It's getting a little bit complicated, but I know, stick with me here. Believe it or not, your roots are the easiest thing of all. All you need is a great shampoo and good shampoo technique. And when I say a great shampoo, I mean a professional shampoo that matches your hair type and allows you to go days between washes. And again, if you need help picking out products for your hair type, check out my recommended product list in the description. Shampoo and conditioner, leave-in conditioner, and hair oil is what I call my Trinity Healthy Hair Routine. It will completely transform your hair and unlock the natural growth potential. Try it out, you'll be glad you did. If you're on the fence about trying this, go back to my other videos, read the comments, and see the results people have gotten with it. Growth trim schedule. A lot of stylists say that the only way to have healthy ends is to get a trim every six weeks. And that is 100% true 
if you don't know how to take care of your ends. But now that you've watched this, you do know how to take care of your ends, which means they'll stay healthy and in good shape for a long time. So if this was the TV show Yellowstone, Rip would be taking that six week trim schedule straight to the train station. That train only runs in one direction. Your new growth trim schedule should be about every four to eight months, not weeks, months. The longer you go, the faster you'll get length. But your ends might get a little bit on the ratty side, so I would just wait as long as you can until you don't like the way that your ends look and then get a trim. Usually that's gonna be in the four to eight month window. Be careful about going blonde. Going blonde is the single most damaging thing you can do to your hair. And this actually surprises a lot of people. A lot of stylists never tell their clients about this because let's be honest, they make a lot of money off of lightening services and telling them like, hey, are you sure you wanna damage your hair? It's bad for business. I had a friend come to me one time and she says, hey, my stylist is blaming me for blow drying my hair. She says that I have breakage and it's because of the blow drying. I took a look at her hair and showed her that the only places she had any breakage was in spots where she had had her hair lightened. Her natural hair color was still completely healthy with no breakage at all. I told her, embrace yourself for this. I never use the B word, but I'm about to use the B word. Bleach. Bleach tears the outside of your hair shaft apart to get rid of the dark pigment inside your hair. It's absolutely brutal. Now it can be done safely if you have a good stylist and do multiple sessions, but if you or somebody you know is thinking about going blonde, I really recommend using repair product afterwards like Olaplex 3 or my new favorite, Redken's Intensive Treatment. If you don't, your hair is going to be damaged and stay damaged. Damaged hair does not grow long. It breaks off and it stays short. Take care of your hair. Don't let it stay damaged. Washing too often. If you're washing your hair every day or every other day, you're locked into the cycle where your hair will never be able to be at its best. You're constantly traumatizing it by wearing it down, stripping the natural, healthy moisture from your hair. It's like washing your jeans every single day. Not a good idea. Hair commandment number five, thou shalt go at least three days between washes, even longer if you can. That's gonna give you the healthiest hair and set you up for the healthiest growth. Now this video would not be complete if we didn't spend a little bit of time talking about home remedies and the most popular one is rosemary oil. At first, rosemary sounds like a strange thing for hair growth, but recently it's turned into a huge trend because there was a study that came out saying that it will grow your hair. So let's take a quick look at that study and pull up the part where it says that it grows hair. It actually doesn't say that it grows hair. All it says is that it couldn't tell a difference between Rogaine and rosemary oil. That's all it says. What you would expect was have half the people you take rosemary oil, see how it grows your hair, and the other half will use a placebo, and then at the end of the six months or something, we'll come back and see who has more hair growth. That would give you really clear evidence of if it worked or not, but they didn't do that because it doesn't work. I've had a lot of clients try this. It's never worked. Please don't waste your time or money. Heat style for hair growth. And first off, yes, of course, use heat protection. This is absolutely mandatory, but that's the basics and it's kind of boring. I've been making videos for a year now, so I'm gonna trust and assume that most of you are ready for the advanced class, which is way more fun. Let's do styling with the curling iron first and then we'll do flat irons in a minute here. With curling irons, the absolute worst thing you can ever do is a roll up curl. Why is that? Because the ends are going on first and that means your ends are going to spend the most time in contact with the iron and that means they're gonna get the most heat damage, which is the opposite of what you want. Your ends are the oldest, most delicate part of your hair. They love things like bingo, early bird dinners, and they have the font size turned all the way up on their cell phone. So when you barge in and come putting a ton of heat on your ends, they're gonna weaken, dry out, and break off. You're not gonna be able to grow your hair out. Here's what you wanna do instead. Most of the heat should go towards the top of the curl. Hair 101, the top of the curl is what's supporting everything else underneath it. That means that the top of the curl is what needs the most hold, which means it needs the most heat so the curl doesn't 
fall out. And that's the exact opposite of what you get with roll up curls or the beach waver or anything like that. That way your curls will hold much longer for days and you'll minimize heat on your ends to keep them healthy. Your ends only need a tiny bit of heat. They don't have to support anything. Just give them a little touch. And real quick, if you're a flat iron person, and I'm right there with you, the best way to polish your ends is not with a flat iron. You can go over it once to get it straight, but the best way to get your ends styled and looking really, really good is to spin them on a brush and a blow dryer. The bristles on that brush are actually gonna polish the hair up, make the ends look really, really good. Try to minimize the time the flat iron ever touches your ends. Once or twice is okay, but really, you don't wanna use it that much. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Remember to check my recommended product list in the description if you're still looking for some products. Have a good one. Take care.